again everyone, this is Tom. Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to discuss an interesting topic with you. As you know, I've switched over to Android. Uh, I'm using the Nexus 5, the uh, red and black Nexus 5 as my daily driver. I have been for a little while now. And before that, I used the HTC One, purely because iOS kind of after iOS 7 it started boring me. I personally feel that Android is just a lot fresher uh, for me at the moment anyway. There's a lot of features on Android I really really enjoy. So this is five things that iOS 8 needs to do to beat or keep up with Android 4.4 KitKat. These things aren't in any particular order, I'm just going to kind of list off five things that I would really really like to have uh, within iOS 8, purely because I've been missing uh, iOS. I do like the experience, but there's just a few things on Android and other oper uh, mobile operating systems that I can't really live without. First off is system-wide app integration. So what happens if you're on Twitter? If you're on Twitter, on your iPhone, you're scrolling through and you get a link to a YouTube video. This happens to me quite a lot or a link to an article or something like that. Uh, it happens to me a lot. I use Twitter uh, a lot actually for kind of just keeping up with media that I'd like to uh, read or listen to or watch. So I tap the YouTube link in somebody's tweet and then uh, on Android it opens up the default uh, the kind of default application that I've set for that, so it's the YouTube app, it brings up the native YouTube application experience, and that's just fine, it's a really good experience, you get a nice crisp uh, watching HD kind of from that YouTube video, but on iOS, you actually, it takes you to the web browser, it takes you to Safari, uh, and it loads up m.youtube.com, which just isn't as good as an experience, so system-wide app integration is a huge one here for iOS 8. Just things like photo sharing, being able to share photos uh, and kind of directly upload them to Dropbox, things like that. Just app, app integration on a system level is just very, very poor in iOS. And this is something that really needs to be taken a leaf out of Android because Android do it fantastically. Next up is better use of iPad screen real estate. Now, I might use an Android smartphone, but I actually use an iPad as my tablet. Uh, the iPad, fully, for me at least, I actually did an iPad Revisited video, so if you'd like to see that, uh, the iPad Air Revisited, I will have that linked down below in the description if you want to go and see that. It is one of the best tablets you can buy. It is, uh, in my opinion, the best tablet you can buy. However, iOS 7 just doesn't really take advantage of the extra screen real estate you get on an iPad uh, up from from an iPhone. I feel like it's kind of like it's just stretched as opposed to uh, utilized. For example, on the phone, when you go into your app switcher, you should be restricted by the screen size. So you, you get a full screen app switcher experience and that's fine. But on an iPad, it should bring up some sort of control panel as well because you don't need uh, the application kind of uh, preview taking up a good kind of three quarters of your display. It's just not really needed. And then the rest of that display is empty space. Make the previews a bit smaller, add some toggles, add some system controls in there, and that'll be all good. Next up is interactive notifications. Now, I don't think Android has this, and there may be uh, external services you can use on Android to actually allow this functionality, but by default, Android doesn't let you have this. Where this is coming from is OS X Mavericks. Now, on Mavericks, you can actually respond to things like messages uh, directly from the notification themselves, so you don't actually have to stop what you're doing, open up the messages app, uh, and kind of type away. You can just respond directly from within the notification. Now, imagine how useful that would be on a phone. Things like Byte SMS are all super, super popular in the jailbreak scene because they just work. Being able to respond to a text or a tweet directly from within an application, an existing application when you're already doing something would be hugely beneficial to the iOS platform and would be one of the most exciting things they could do with iOS 8. Fourth, setting a choice for default applications. Now, I cannot believe that Apple hasn't done this yet. And to be honest, I don't know if they will after kind of ignoring it for so long. But imagine being able to set a default email client on your iPhone. You no longer have to just use mail uh, by Apple purely because it's kind of what they want you to use. Obviously there are options to have different mail clients, but it's not the default, it's not the core functionality of email built into iOS. Imagine being able to change that to Mailbox or Gmail, just be, this be so much easier. Or imagine being able to change your default browser. Safari is an okay browser, I mean if you use Safari on your Mac, 
Uh, it's very well integrated, but I use Chrome for almost all of my uh, web browsing experiences on every single platform. So being able to set a default web browser as Chrome from on my iPad, for instance, would just be fantastic. And it would mean that I could take advantage of all of Chrome's fantastic features by default on my iPhone. And then finally, we have glanceable information on the home screen and lock screen. Now, Android does this well, and also Windows Phone. Windows Phone has live tiles. Uh, they're not kind of widgets as they are on Android, but they kind of just give you some information on your home screen without having to directly open the app. On Android, as I said, you have widgets, so you can uh, maybe install the Gmail widget on your home screen and you kind of get a uh, breakdown of your Gmail application directly from your home screen without launching the app. I'm not a huge fan of home screen widgets. I don't use them all that much. I personally feel like if you have the widget, you may as well just launch the app. But on the lock screen, they're super, super useful. So on your lock screen on your Android, uh, Android KitKat 4.4 device, you can add lock screen widgets and just scroll along to them directly from your lock screen without even having to unlock your device and kind of get a breakdown of your, maybe your most used applications, check your Gmail, check your tasks, something like that. It really is very, very useful, and that's the kind of thing that Apple needs in iOS 8. Some sort of glanceable information on your home screen or your lock screen. That means you don't have to open up every individual app to kind of get a breakdown of what's happening. There we have it guys, that's my five picks for what Apple needs to do with iOS 8. If you have any, definitely drop them in a comment down below, I'll be responding to as many of those as possible. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video, if you have and have made it to this point, I would really appreciate it if you did drop it a like. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos just like this one, and I'll catch you next time.